And I call on Jamie Hepburn. Yeah, Presiding officer, I uh, welcome this opportunity to update Parliament on progress towards the delivery of the Fair Start Scotland Employment Support Service, one of the first powers devolved under the 2016 Scotland Act. This is uh, an important milestone for employment support here in Scotland. It is an opportunity to make employment services work differently and more effectively for the people of Scotland. The Scottish Government is already using new powers to deliver one-year transitional employment support services, and these are already helping unemployed people with health conditions and disabilities across the country to find work and to stay in work. These services are, are providing a continuity of support while we progress towards delivering Fair Start Scotland from April 2018. We all understand the health, social and economic benefits from getting more people into good, rewarding and fair work. Uh, this is the heart of our ambitions for delivering inclusive economic growth. That ambition is laid out in our economic and labour market strategies and demonstrated through our commitment to the Fair Work Agenda being promoted by the Fair Work Convention. Uh, that ambition is also writ through Fair Start Scotland as well. Uh, President Officer, today following the conclusion of a rigorous and open procurement process, I can announce we have signed contracts uh, for up to five years to deliver Fair Start Scotland from April of next year. Fair Start Scotland will provide tailored person-centred support to a minimum of 38,000 people who are further removed from the labour market and for whom work is a realistic prospect. Before I outline the successful bids, I would like to thank all of the organisations that have taken part in this process. Engaging in any procurement process requires a significant investment, and whilst I know that those who have secured these contracts will be pleased to, there will be others who feel they have missed out. Every bid received showed the real commitment, dedication and desire of organisations in the public, private and third sectors to help support people into work. I appreciate the work that all those involved have put into this process. In announcing who has been successful today, I am confident that we have been able to award contracts to a range of providers that have demonstrated strong collaborative proposals that will deliver our shared ambitions. If I can let me now outline the detail of the nine contracts I am announcing today. The contract area one covers the city of Glasgow. The contract has been awarded to People Plus Group Limited to be delivered in partnership with Remploy and third sector partners Momentum Skills and the Lennox Partnership. <coughs> the estimated value of this contract is £19.1 million. Pounds. The contract area two covers the North and South Lanarkshire local authority areas. The contract has been awarded to Remploy Limited to be delivered in partnership with third sector partners Enable Scotland and Routes to Work South. The estimated value of this contract is £12.6 million. Pounds. The contract area three is Tayside and covers Perth and Kinross and Angus and Dundee. The contract has been awarded to Remploy Limited to be delivered in partnership with third sector partners Rathbone Training and the Wise Group. The estimated value of this contract is £7.3 million. Pounds. Contract area four is Forth Valley and covers the Falkirk, Stirling and Clintmanshire local authority areas. The contract has been awarded to Falkirk Council to be delivered in partnership with public sector partners, Quick Manager Council, Stirling Council and NHS Forth Valley. The estimated value of this contract is £5 million. Pounds. A contract area five is East and covers Edinburgh, Midlothian, East and West Lothian, Fife and the Borders. The contract has been awarded to Start Scotland Limited to be delivered in partnership with Working Links, Triage and third sector partner Momentum Scotland. The estimated value of this contract is £21.3 million. Pounds. The contract area 6 is South West and covers Dumfries and Galloway and the three Ayrshire local authority areas. The contract has been awarded to Start Scotland Limited to be delivered in partnership with Working Links and third sector partners Rathbone Training, the Lennox Partnership and the Wise Group. The estimated value of this contract is £10.1 million. Pounds. The contract area 7 is North East and covers Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire local authority areas. The contract has been awarded to third sector organisation Momentum Scotland to be delivered in partnership with Life Skills Centres Limited and Enterprise Mentoring Limited. This contract will be delivered alongside third sector partners Enable Scotland, Aberdeen Foyer and the Scottish Association for Mental Health. The estimated value of this contract is £5.6 million. Pounds. The contract area 8 is Highlands and Islands and covers the Island Butte, Elan Shiar, Highland, Murray, Orkney and Shetland. The contract has been awarded to People Plus Limited. This contract will be delivered in partnership with a mixture of public, private and third sector partners of our, of our Guile and Butte Council, Life Skills Centres Limited, Lochaber Hope, Momentum Scotland, 
Third Sector Hebrides and 2020 Clearview Limited. The estimated value of this contract is £6.2 million. And finally, President Officer, contract area 9 is West. This contract area covers East and West in Bartonshire, East Renfrewshire, Inverclyde and Renfrewshire. Uh, this contract has been awarded to the, the third sector organisation, the WISE Group, and we delivered in partnership with Working Links and third sector partners, the Scottish Association for Mental Health, the Lennox Partnership, Enable Scotland and the Royal National Institute for the Blind. The estimated value of this contract is £8.8 .8 million. Uh, under the provisions we have laid out, the contract for the West area was specifically reserved for supported businesses to bid into. This is the first time we have exercised this power, demonstrating this government's commitment to that sector. A supported business provide vital permanent employment for those disadvantaged in the labour market, and we are determined to develop a more diverse delivery market for employment support through devolution. This is why, unlike previous approaches, we have used devolved powers to reserve one area for bids from supported businesses. If whilst the WISE Group has secured a specific contract under the reservation for supported business in the West area, we have also seen success successful bids from a supported business in two other lots, Remploy in Lanarkshire and Tayside, and involvement from both organisations in other areas as delivery partners, demonstrating the strength of that business model. Presiding officer, we have evaluated the bids we have received to secure best quality and consistent provision across the whole of Scotland and we will rigorous, rigorously performance manage the service to ensure this is delivered. This is crucial to helping us ensure continuous improvement in the public services we can offer people. We have listened in public consultation, we have listened in ongoing stakeholder engagement and we have listened to the devolved employment services advisory group that has helped shape, develop and test our devolved employability approach. I want to place on record my thanks to Professor Alan McGregor, the chair and to the third private and public sector members of that group. As we enter the delivery phase of Fair Start Scotland, I can confirm I plan to develop that consultative approach further and to continue to listen to a diverse range of voices as we deliver Fair Start Scotland and a more aligned, wider employment support landscape. If Fair Start Scotland will see unprecedented levels of partnership delivery. The joint working we will see between private, public and third sector delivery partners across Scotland will be a real strength of our new approach. This is not simply business as usual. We are taking a partnership approach in Scotland that will see more than half of provision delivered by supported business and by third sector and public sector bodies. It was Fair Start Scotland has been designed nationally. All services will be delivered locally through new consortia and featuring a range of special providers to ensure that people receive the right type of support from them. And we are taking a different approach to the UK government by funding these services appropriately, committing an additional £20 million pounds each year from our budget over and above the significantly reduced funding being provided by the UK Government. A presiding officer, today I am laying out who will deliver our Fair Start Scotland programme through the contracts that have been awarded. But much more critical than that, we must remember that the delivery of this programme is about providing support to people who need it. Our vision for Fair Start Scotland is clear. We are using devolved powers to deliver a distinct and different approach to employment support in Scotland. Our approach is significantly different than previously seen in UK government programmes. We are putting people at the centre of these services and treating them with dignity. Fair Start Scotland will have respect and fairness at its core, supporting people to achieve their full potential. We are listening to the views of people who rely on these services and we will continue to do so. We are better reflecting the reality of Scotland's geography, regional economies and population spread with nine contract areas rather than simply lumping the whole of Scotland together as one contract package area, as has been the case under the UK Government. We are also delivering differently by ensuring providers have committed to a wider fair work, workforce and community benefits agenda as part of their bids, including paying the living wage and avoiding use of zero hours contracts. And crucially, as this Parliament is endorsed by overwhelming majority, Fair Start, Start Scotland will be voluntary, working with unemployed people to encourage them to take the opportunity of support towards work, not threatening them with sanctions by the Department for Work and Pensions. This is in keeping with our desire through all of our new employability and social security powers to treat people with dignity and respect. Presiding officer, our employment programmes are not about supporting organisations, sectors or institutions. They are above all about supporting people, people who 
deserve to be supported through a person-centered and tailored approach that meets their needs. People who deserve to be supported to achieve their full potential. People who deserve to be supported to enter work and retain a job. People who deserve to be treated with dignity, respect and fairness to get on life. Presiding officer, just as is the case with the approach by this government to all its endeavours, people will be at the core of our approach to taking forward Fair Start Scotland. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions. Adam Tompkins, be followed by Jackie Bailey. Adam Tompkins. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Minister for his of his statement. M much of it I, I welcome, as I welcome the devolution of employability programmes in the Smith Commission. But I am puzzled by one thing. Um, David Semple of the PCS Union at the Social Security, last, Social Security Committee last week explained his union's absolute opposition to the involvement of the private sector in all devolved aspects of Social Security, employability services included. Um, he said that his union's opposition was not ideological but based on performance. None of the privatised employability contracts have had the same delivery outcomes as previous state-run programmes, he said. Now, the minister knows I don't agree with that, but I thought Scottish ministers did. After all, Jean Freeman has explained to loud applause in this chamber that devolved D DLA PIP will not be administered by the private sector. So why has Jamie Hepburn signed contracts not only with the private sector, but I note with one of the very companies that delivered the work programme in Scotland, a programme that the Minister has previously condemned. Is this not a case of the SNP saying one thing and doing quite another? Minister. Well, uh, let me begin by apologising for, for puzzling Professor Tompkins. That certainly was not uh, my intentional puzzle he seems to be. And I think it's uh, symptomatic of the uh, Conservative Party's approach to these matters, President Officer, because I appreciate that Professor Tompkins is the a social security spokesperson for the Conservatives in this place. But we are treating employment support rather differently. We are not treating it as part and parcel of the social security system. Clearly, there has to be interaction between those two systems. But we are treating our employment service as an opportunity to support people to get them into work and not to tie them into a manipulative, unfair social security system that sanctions them at every uh, turn. And in relation to uh, the point that has uh, been made uh, rather uh, mean-spiritedly, I have to say, by Professor Tompkins of uh, my uh, saying one thing and doing another, I would uh, remind him that in creating a fairer Scotland employability support, a discussion paper which we published on the 6th of July 2015, we set out that Scotland had developed a strong mixed economy employability provision with important contributions made by the public, private and third sectors. In our consultation response published on 22nd of March 2016, we said we will work with suppliers to consider what support we can provide to encourage consortia approaches that reflect the existing mixed economy and employee services in Scotland, the private provision and local authority and third sector delivery. In this parliament, this very chamber, a presiding officer, in a debate we had in employment service on the 5th of October 2016. Professor Tompkins was here. I remember him being here. He clearly wasn't listening. I said, I intend to take that opportunity to deliver employment support services, building on our strengths in both the public and private sectors and local authority, third sector and specialist delivery. And I reiterated that point at our employability summit on the 23rd of November 2016. In print, in public and in parliament, I have said it would be delivered across a range of suppliers. That's exactly what we're delivering. And yes, the uh, third sector and supported business sector is a critical element of this work as well. And when you take into account all the contracts we've awarded between the public, the third sector and supported businesses, they constitute a majority of the contracts we've awarded today. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Ivan McKee. Jackie Bailey. Can I thank the Minister for an advanced copy of his statement and welcome the progress made with developing Fair Start Scotland. Like the Scottish Government, Labour is committed to a person-centred, tailored approach that is voluntary and based on meeting individual needs. But can I ask the Minister three questions? Firstly, and I'm being very specific here, can he tell me what percentage of contract value has been awarded to the private sector? and the percentage going solely to the third sector to establish if this meets the government's ambition of a mixed market of support. Secondly, can he explain why he's copied the Tory government's approach to the work programme with a payment by result system? Um, the concern, of course, is that providers will focus on early wins and those closest to the labour market, leaving those with significant barriers without sufficient support. And finally, many will welcome five-year funding 
but, but let me sound a note of caution. Um, I would be interested to hear what opportunities there will be to refocus the contracts if they don't perform as required. Minister. Let me thank uh, Jackie Bailey for her, her questions. In terms of the a precise percentage of contract value, I'm happy to follow up in writing, but what I can tell her uh, today is that the specific uh, division between uh, the uh, public uh, sector, sorry, I beg your pardon, the third sector and the private sector is roughly equivalent when you factor in uh, the public sector supported business uh, as a clear majority. Uh, in relation to uh, the latter point she made about the uh, opportunities to be flexible, I was I think it was very clear when I was before the committee that I think that is uh, important. She will understand, of course, in the modern of contracts, there is only so much you can do. But yes, within that, uh, there is the possibility to be flexible as circumstances uh, arise and change, including looking at some of the referral criteria, who can be referred into that programme. I think that's uh, very important. It also speaks of a longer term agenda of trying to better align uh, the various offerings we have for uh, employability and employment support. In relation to her suggestion that we are copying uh, the Tory uh, model here, I have to refute that uh, utterly uh, and I can run down uh, uh, and I will run down the range of ways it is different between what has gone before and what we expect to happen with the Working Health Programme. She uh, says that she shares our ambition for a voluntary service. Our service is going to be voluntary. That has not been the case with the programme previously. It is not going to be the case with the uh, programme that we see uh, with the Working Health Programme. In terms of uh, the uh, consistency of service, we have laid out very clearly a minimum expectation of uh, providers. That has not been the case with UK government programmes in the past. It is not expected to be the case with the Working Health Programme that the UK government are going to be. Don't worry, Ms Bailey, I'll come to payment by outcome, but I think it's very important. I place on record why the suggestion that we are replicating the UK government's approach is utter nonsense. So let me finish that and I'll come to your last point. In terms of the Working Health Programme going forward, we uh, see that uh, there is going to be the same approach by the UK government that providers are setting uh, their own uh, standards. In terms of the length of support under the Working Health Programme, we are actually seeing a reduction in the amount of time that a, a client or person may be uh, supported, as was the case under uh, the Work Programme a reduction in length of time where we will have up to two and a half years uh, uh, support. We are embedding in our approach an individual placement and support service of those with uh, mental health, uh, severe and enduring mental ill health. Uh, I recall uh, Bill Scott, it is indeed a list, Ms Bailey. So okay, Minister, that, that's to, probably enough of the list in that case. Bill, can we uh, move Bill, on to... Bill, well, let me just, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Officer, Very brief, by outcome sir. is indeed part of our model. I think that is important. But, of course, we are embedding an uh, upfront uh, fee. That was important. We heard that uh, call. Uh, clearly, though, with any employment programme, we do want to see people get into work. And I think on that basis, it's important we set expectations that they will. Thank you. Ivan McKee, to followed by Dean Lockhart. Ivan McKee. Thank you. Reminding the Chamber of my role as Parliamentary Liaison Officer to the Cabinet Secretary for the Economy, can I ask how will the Government align their programmes with existing health and social care support and what impact does the Minister expect this to have on other public services? Yes, it, well, I, I, as I just uh, alluded to uh, uh, a moment ago, uh, integration and alignment of services is uh, critically uh, important for uh, us as an administration. There will be uh, that opportunity through the range of providers we've put in place to begin that uh, work. Uh, we have also uh, announced a, a £2.5 million pot of funding uh, that I've already made uh, public for integration alignment. That's set up 15 projects working across 13 uh, local authority areas looking to better support people uh, with mental health conditions, with a learning disability, with uh, housing needs coming out of the justice system. So the I, I recognise inherently the need to uh, support people in all aspects of uh, their life and their journey towards employment, presiding officer. It's not going to be just as simple as focusing purely on employment skills. There will be issues that arise in a person's life. So that's why the integration alignment agenda is so important for us, and that's why we'll be taking that opportunity through uh, this programme. I would just emphasise there's eight, eight and a half minutes in the first three questions. There's nine more questioners, so if we can get through them. Dean Lockhart to be followed by Alison Johnson. Dean Lockhart. Thank you. The total value of the contracts announced today amount to £96 million. Can the Minister explain what contractual and other assurances are in place to avoid a repeat of the cost and budget overruns we have seen across many of this Government's programmes? Minister. Well, uh, it's, uh, I'm very delighted that Dean Lockhart has got into the territory of, uh, the, uh, of the cost of this uh, service because 
Uh, one of the things we have done is leveraged in uh, additional uh, revenue from the rest of our budget, £20 million uh, per uh, year, to make up for the significant cuts that his uh, party and government uh, sent to us uh, as an administration uh -huh. through the devolution of uh, this service. In, in relation to uh, the, uh, the assurances he seeks, that is of course set out as a, a contractual provision. We will be monitoring these contracts very closely, very carefully uh, indeed, and uh, if it is an issue that uh, the, any committee of this uh, parliament wants to uh, ever ask me about, then I'll be happy to return to them or raise it in this uh, parliamentary chamber. I'll respond to any issue. Of course, what we have done uh, is today is announced what the contracts are and a copy of that detail will be available in the Scottish Parliament Information Centre, which I'm sure Mr Lockhart will be running to immediately after uh, we finish this statement. Uh, Alison Johnson to be followed by Alex Crowell Hamilton. Alison Johnson. Um, thank you. The Scottish Government is a Scottish living wage employer, and in answer to a question of mine, the Minister answered devolved employment services will support the Scottish Government's fair work ambitions, in particular by supporting individuals into sustained work, which offers a route out of poverty. Can I ask whether Fair Start Scotland will support the Scottish living wage and provide a route out of poverty by only paying providers when they place someone in employment that pays at least the Scottish living wage? Yes. Well, I, I think the first uh, point to make uh, in relation to that, and Alison Johnson is quite correct to point out this government's ambitions for uh, the living wage. The first thing that we've done to, is taken the opportunity through the awarding of these contracts to make sure that the providers themselves are paying the living wage to those who work uh, for them as an organisation. In terms of uh, the agenda of getting people uh, into employment, uh, yes, the, we will uh, be uh, working with organisations very uh, closely and encouraging them to take every step they can to make sure that those who end up in employment at the end of that are uh, remunerated adequately. And uh, our aspiration is, of course, uh, that everyone in this country should pay paid the real living wage, and that will be no different with our approach to this agenda as it will be with any other. Alex Cool Hamilton to be followed by Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for early sight of his statement. Many of the successful bidders and their consortium members for a number of the contract areas are the same organisations who are currently delivering the service. How will the Scottish Government guarantee to people that the services they get will change for the better as a result of this process? Minister. Well, of course, it, it does occur to me that uh, some of the problems we've seen and the, uh, the uh, predecessor programmes were uh, in place when Mr Cole Hamilton's party were in government. And I think that's the fundamental point uh, to make, is that the organisations, any organisation works to policy set by uh, the administration that's procured that service. So our, our uh, model is very different, and I've laid out already very clearly in what sense it will be uh, different from the, that that went before under the hands of the UK government, not least that it will not compel people uh, to take part. It will be a voluntary service because I believe we'll get more out of people uh, in that way. So uh, in that sense, I can uh, assure uh, Mr Cole Hamilton that there will be uh, a significantly different approach under uh, this contract, just as there has been in this transitional year. One of my great joys for the officers going out to see those who benefited by uh, the programme we've put in place this year, who inform me that it is remarkably drastically different and much superior to those programmes that they went through under the hands of the Department of Work and Pensions. Ben McPherson to be followed by Daniel Johnson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This matter has been touched on briefly so far, but for further clarity and information, can the Minister outline what opportunities there will be for collaboration with the third sector, both in the short term and in the future, in the delivery of the Fair Start Scotland support service? Yes. I would thank Mr McPherson for that question, President Officer. As I've already set out, the third sector is a, an important player in the contracts that I have announced today. So in the immediate term, they're going to be getting on with the work involved in delivering uh, this uh, contract. In relation to other opportunities, I mentioned in my statement the need for a continuous improvement. Uh, I will be looking to have a group uh, similar in nature uh, to the advisory group that was established that had uh, third sector involvement through the third sector employability uh, forum. I want to see the third sector involved in that. And of course, through a, a range of specialist provision that's already been laid out in the contracts that have been, on the tenders that have been uh, uh, coming, uh, that have been successfully awarded contracts through, uh, there is a range of third sector bodies laid out there to be uh, subcontractors. And as we go forward, if uh, contractors uh, require further specialist provision, 
they will be, I'm sure, prevailing upon the third sector for that as well. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Daniel Thank Johnson. you, Presiding Officer. The Minister uh, mentioned in his statement that these contracts would be subject to rigorous performance management. Could he go into some more detail around that measurement regime and outlining how the contracts will be evaluated and how that information uh, will be reported back to Parliament? Minister. Well, as I've just alluded to, one of the things we will, of course, be doing is making sure that we have um, that group in place to ensure uh, continuous uh, improvement. Uh, my officials will uh, be uh, rigorously uh, assessing the, uh, the efficacy of the, um, the contracts we've been putting uh, in place to see how uh, effective they have been in uh, reaching the numbers we want to see. We want to see uh, at least 38,000 people supported through uh, the contracts we've put in place. We're looking very closely to make sure uh, we are reaching uh, that ambition and of course uh, as uh, parliament would expect we will uh, regularly publish uh, statistics and make them available for the consumption of members of this scottish parliament and for the wider public uh, to see just how we're doing in that regard and uh, i'm sure uh, i will be returning to answer questions about that in the future fulton mcgregor to be followed by jamie halker johnson thank you president officer can the minister expand a bit further on the rationale for the nine contract areas and what impact he expects these to have Minister. Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I think one of the things that we saw very clearly and heard very clearly was a, a concern that uh, some of the, uh, the manner in which the previous contracts had been procured uh, did not reflect some of the, uh, the geographies that we, uh, the geography we have here uh, in uh, Scotland. It were too uh, large that uh, precluded a number of organisations from being uh, able uh, to bid. We have uh, worked with a, a range of uh, people involved and organisations involved in the delivery of uh, a range of employability interventions, uh, including a uh, local government. One of the things we heard back it was uh, a preference from, for example, the Scottish Local Authority for Economic uh, Development, uh, who suggested we should have eight areas. We looked at their proposition, thought it was more or less right, but actually nine would be uh, a better reflection on uh, uh, delivery, being able to deliver to local circumstances. Uh, of course, we were looking at this very closely uh, to see uh, again how effective that has been. Uh, and when it comes uh, round uh, at the end of these contracts, depending on the direction we want to take, uh, we'll look uh, very closely to see how effective that approach has been. Jamie Halco Johnson to be followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the Minister has already suggested that detailed outcomes data will be publicly available from all providers to ensure the effectiveness of each regional contract. Could he tell us what uh, stages the data will be provided? Minister. Uh, I, I'm not quite able to say that today, uh, Presiding Officer. I have made very clear uh, my uh, commitment. It's on the record now that we will be providing that information. Uh, it will be it regularly published, it will be it regularly available, uh, and I, I, I make that commitment. And uh, as soon as that becomes uh, a confirmed position in terms of when we will make that information available, then we'll let uh, everyone and uh, every member of the Scottish Parliament know uh, that. And uh, if I have further questions about that, I'll be happy to respond to Mr. Halco Johnson or, or anyone else. John Mason to be followed by Gordon Linders. John Mason. Thank you. Can the Minister say anything about those who are currently receiving employment support and who might be a bit concerned about how the transition will work? Yes, sir. It's an important question because we don't want anyone to uh, be concerned. What I can say uh, very clearly to Mr Mason, uh, the rest of the members in the Chamber and indeed uh, the wider public is that uh, those who uh, are uh, benefiting by the transitional arrangements we've been put in this year, there is a period under which our new contracts are in place. They will continue to receive the support from the providers that have been put in place this year uh, after the end of this financial year. So there is uh, that clear consistency of provision. So in that sense, no one needs to be worried. Gordon Linders to be followed by Stuart McWillan. Gordon Linders. Can the Minister offer insight into how adequate provision was made for local specialised services to participate meaningfully? in the procurement process in their own right? Minister. Well, uh, this was uh, something that was of uh, critical uh, importance uh, for, for, for me in terms of uh, allowing a wider range of suppliers. There was uh, a significant uh, piece of uh, engagement over a, a long period of, of time uh, to uh, get to the position we are in, starting uh, several uh, years ago. We have engaged over a, a number of uh, public events. Uh, we have engaged through 
the uh, medium of uh, the Scottish Government's website to make people aware of the opportunity. Uh, and uh, through direct engagement, for example, one of the concerns that was expressed was about the length of time we had for people to tender, uh, which came from the Third Sector Employability Forum. So having heard that, for example, extended the period of time in which people could tender for the service. So uh, I've been very clear uh, and responsive to uh, that concern and uh, done all we could to ensure that uh, special providers in local areas could uh, participate and take part. And of course, I would observe that that's part of the reason we put in place nine contract package areas. Uh, my clear view of uh, we were under the Working Health uh, programme is that uh, Scotland would very likely uh, right now be one contract package area if it's still being administered by the Department for Working Pensions, which would have given local organisations virtually no chance whatsoever of being able to tender. And finally, Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister confirm that those with a higher need who have not been supported by the previous DWP approach will be at the forefront of Fair Start Scotland? Minister. Yes, I, I can uh, confirm that. We uh, are operating a, a model by which there is uh, three levels of support of, in, uh, of uh, uh, intensivity, uh, depending on uh, the required uh, support for that uh, individual. Uh, that's why I've made the point that there is up to 30 months of, of support uh, that includes uh, 18 months of pre-work uh, support and up to 12 months of in-work support, which is a significant advance on what was in place uh, before and, again, uh, what we expect to see in the Working Health Programme. So, uh, yes, I'm alive to the concern that uh, those who need support most must uh, have it, and that's what we're putting in place for this programme. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister and all the members for their questions. That concludes our ministerial statement and the next item of business is a debate on motion 7946 on in the name of Gordon Lindhurst on gender pay gap and I would urge all members who wish to speak in this debate to press their request to speak buttons now.